Rainbow Rocks. Oh, now this, this definitely was a step up. Honestly, if I had to describe the first two movies, the Equestria Girls feels like a story that just features ponies in high school. Whereas Rainbow Rocks definitely feels like a pony story, they just happen to be in high school. And the build-up for this movie was great, especially with all the shorts they released in between. And I will come back and talk about the shorts another day. Yeah, I know, that's kind of the theme of this video, isn't it? But what do you want from me? I'm covering three movies here. Of course, the big concern about the shorts was that Sunset wasn't in any of them. I'll be honest, I was really worried they were just going to make some throwaway line and we wouldn't see her. I really wanted to see her redemption. As I've said, I'm a sucker for redemption arcs. So, when material didn't really feature much, I got worried. Then came the preview of her in the gym trying to help people out with their projects. And, well, I'm a mayor now, I guess I didn't get away with this. My reaction was, <laughs> Yeah, that went from me being interested in the movie to positively giddy about it. I couldn't wait to see this movie, and it did not disappoint. Because, here's the thing. Yes, the first movie was every high school movie we've seen before, including the Mean Girl arc. But you know what we never see? What happens after that movie's over? And Rainbow Rocks addresses that. We see Sunset trying to make up for her past mistakes. She realized what she did was wrong, and now she wants to move forward. It's just hard for her because, well, everyone remembers that, uh, yeah, again, she's kind of a bitch. The fact that they didn't forgive her right away is another nice contrast between the human world and Equestria, where forgiveness is handed out a little too easily sometimes. But yes, yeah, Sunset knowing she did wrong and trying to build a better reputation just shows a great strength of character about her and is what I was really looking forward. And I'm just gussing about Sunset again, aren't I? Okay, well, let's move away from last movie's antagonist to this movie's antagonist, The Dazzling. Like uh, Sunset, they have a really good, sort of mysterious opening that brings up a lot of questions. The main one being, how do they fit all that hair in those hoodies? Well, if I may headcanon again, I'm reminded of an idea from the Transformers fandom when it first popped up online. A thing called Subspace like a subspace pocket. That is where all the Autobots and Decepticons would pull their weapons out of when they reached behind them. So for my money, that's what those hoodies are. They're the Dazzling's personal subspace pockets. And hey, I think the clothes are kind of magic. It makes as much sense as anything, right? But yes, the Dazzling's. Boy, did they hit the fandom hard. Everyone almost immediately loved them, which... Given their motivation and their abilities is kind of terrifying. Especially since they won us over when they released their song, Battle of the Bands. Dear Celestia, is it hard not to be won over by that song? It's such a great villain song that gives any Disney song a run for its money. And I love that thematically it follows We Are All Together from earlier in the movie. They are such a great contrast that they just need to be paired together. To the point that I'm actually very disappointed in the soundtrack that they separated them. No. This is, they need to follow each other. It's just the way it has to be. And as for the visuals during this part, <laughs> well... Okay, another problem people had when Equestria Girls was first announced was that now that they're human, people will sexualize them. Which, if you didn't think that was already happening, Welcome to the internet! 
But no, despite some hip shaking in the first movie, there was nothing really, you know, sexual about them. They, the creative team kept themselves really restrained. And then this part happened. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel like this is the creative team's like, no, 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 that's not sexualizing them. This is sexualizing them. I mean, seriously, just this one shot alone. What else am I supposed to think except... Booty, 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 rocking everywhere. And she is indeed rocking it. Yes, yes. So, once we've established our villains and our heroes veered out their magic, they decide to get in contact with Twilight to try to help them out. But the portal is closed for 30 moons, however long that is. How will they get in contact with her? Well, this need, leads to another really good Sunset Shimmer moment. Not only is her journal a really good plot device, it's also a really good character moment where we figure, find out that on some level she knew what she was doing was wrong, so she wasn't completely evil, just, well, as I said, let her insecurities get the best of her, and she tried to prove she was better than everyone else. These are the little moments that really sell these movies for me. But even after getting the message of Twilight, again, portal is still closed. So how does she solve the problem? With science, of course! And hey, that works. That was a brilliant solution to the problem. Of course, when we did get the history of the Dazzlings and found out they were sirens and Star's World sent them to another dimension, I just couldn't help but think that Star's World's kind of a jerk, isn't he? Eh, make it some other dimension's problem. I mean, granted, he thought they'd have their magic taken away, but still... Wait. He used a spell to send them to a world without magic. And that world happened to be a modern-day human world. Oh my Celestia, he's Rumpelstiltskin. That might actually explain quite a lot. Huh. Anyway, it's time to beat the Dazzlings music to music. They figure out they have to use some kind of counterspell and a song to uh, break the spell they have on the students of CHS. And it took all my effort not to just stand up in the middle of the theater and scream out, Counter song at that point, cause that's what this is, mother bucking counter song. That's awesome. I do like that Twilight wasn't able to just come up with the counter song right away too. It showed that even as an Alicorn princess, she still has some learning to do. I gotta say though, the bad song that they performed wasn't even really that bad. <laughs> So, even when the show is trying to make a terrible song, they still sort of succeed in making something that's not ear-gratingly terrible. I think that's a compliment. Anyway, after that we get a very nice montage set to another of the Dazzling's beautiful songs showing off the various bands in the battle. And as Daniel Ingram said on the commentary, it was a really good way to work in and show all these bands without having to write a whole lot of songs. Though, honestly, I'm disappointed there wasn't some kind of Wild Stallions reference in there. It just seems to write itself to me. Or at least a reference to a, another band and another Hasbro property.
You know, actually, I wonder how that would work with them against the Dazzlings. They both mind control people through music. Hmm. Speaking of the Dazzlings, let me just address them at this point in the movie. Adagio, stop being so sadistically evil. Arya, do something of note. Sonata, you're adorable. Keep doing what you're doing. Now, that out of the way, we find out that their music is not only affecting the rest of the school, but it's starting to get to the rain booms as well as tensions start to rise. Also, it seems Sunset has decided to take lessons from Edge now. Ooh, that has just got to hurt. Then, of course, everyone in the school hates her again because drama. I already mentioned the scene with Sunset and the Dazzlings in an earlier video, but I do want to point out that when this happened in the theater, I was really getting nervous they're going to pull the trick where Sunset decides to join them because no one likes her anyway. Not only would that have wrecked the character arc she was going through right now, but it would have been really cliche, and this writing staff, I feel, can do better. Well, except when they pulled that in the fourth season finale with Discord, but that's even more of a reason I'm glad they didn't do it here. Of course, their manipulations do work on Trixie, who then knocks the rain booms down into that pit under the stage where the last Battle of Bands is going to be held. Honestly, why do they even have that? I mean, again, this is part of the school, right? Is this supposed to be for special plays or concerts or things or people rise out of them? If so, why is it a lever that just opens a door that makes people fall? That seems like a pretty big hazard there. But hey, I guess we need to lock the rain booms in a room so they can fight some more and their tensions can boil to the surface and their magic start to be sucked up as the Dazzlings play! What will happen? Will evil prevail? Would good fail? Nah, of course not. This is still My Little Pony after all. But it does lead to the scene where Sunset takes over as the lead of the Equestria Girls series. Right about here. Stop! You have to stop! This is what they've been after all along. They're feeding off of the magic inside you. How can they be using our magic? It's the magic of friendship. Ever since you started this band, you've been letting little things get to you. I never said anything because I didn't feel like it was my place. Not when I was so new to this whole friendship thing. I still have a lot to learn, but I do know that if you don't work out even the smallest problems right at the start, the magic of friendship can be turned into something else. I can't believe all this tension was happening right under my nose and I didn't realize it. I'm supposed to be the one with all the answers, and all I've done since I got here is let you down. I don't think anyone is supposed to have all the answers. But you can count on your friends to help you find them. I think you already have. Her being the one giving the friendship speech was just a beautiful moment and great progression for her character. And a reminder for Twilight that, once again, she doesn't always have the answers. It was a nice scene that helped build all of the Rainboom's friendships back up to where we know they should be. A beautiful scene that was immediately undone when we find out that none of them thought to try to pull the door open! I mean, these have got to be, like, you know, average to good students. And two of Celestia's former top students. None of them thought to try the door. Eh, that kind of undermines things, doesn't it? But hey, it gave Spike a chance to be really useful. And a cameo by my favorite background pony slash human. And fun note, uh, when Spike mentions she never takes her headphones off, go back and watch those scenes. He's right. She's never seen without those headphones. <laughs> Good touch there, animators. So the band is back together. They're stronger than ever. They're about to have this great battle with the Dazzlings. That doesn't go as well as they thought. But it does lead into the defining moment for Sunset's character. And again, I gotta say I was a little hesitant that... Are they going to pull another one, fast one on us? Is she going to side with the Dazzlings here? And then, the beat dropped. You're never going to bring me down. You're never going to break this part of me. My friends are here to bring me around. 
not singing just for popularity. Oh, do I love that moment and that part of the song. Just so much emotion put into it. It's it's perfect. And honestly, I find myself humming it a few times a day when I'm dealing with a lot of stress at work or other places. All of this culminates in her getting her own ponied up form. Speaking of, I'd like to point out that it's only with Twilight that they have the rainbow streaks in their ho hair and on their clothes. I thought that was a nice little continuation and nod to the fourth season finale. Speaking of rainbow colors, Sunset gets to add her own red to the rainbow they make and create that alicorn thing! Seriously, what is that? Is that like the alicorn of rock or what? Either way, it's pretty awesome looking. And with that concentration of awesome, they defeat the Dazzlings to destroy their pendants and make it so they can't sing and they run away to... Well, yeah, a lot of people think that since they can't absorb negative emotions anymore, they're gonna starve and die, and that's really dark. A little too dark for this show. Personally, I subscribe to Twilight's theory. They're just three harmless teenage girls. Though again, I have to point out that teenage girls ain't exactly harmless because of the crazy. Still, I like to think that they are human now and can sustain themselves on regular food. Now, finding a job, a house, clothing, things like that, well, that's fuel for fanfics. But for now, the day is saved, and once again, Flash tries to make himself relevant. Rain booms roll! That was amazing! <laughs> You may have vanquished the Dazzlings, but you will never have the amazing, show-stopping ability of the great and powerful Trixie! Trixie! The great and powerful moment killer! Another uh, funny moment from my theater experience. My roommate's girlfriend at the time was a huge flashlight shipper and got really excited when that scene happened and then got really sad that Trixie interrupted them but the girl behind me was very happy that she showed up. So, eh, <laughs> shipping stuff. And so we leave Rainbow Rocks with Sunset now officially part of the group and kind of taking Twilight's place in there. And uh, boy, was I happy about that. I love that she is part of this group. Now we just need some more merchandise over, guys. You know, human merchandise. Because seriously, the only time we've seen her as a pony in animation was that very first scene in the first Equestria Girls movie. That's it. Well, that's a rant for another day. For now, we focus on this little Marvel-style stinger they gave us with... <gasps> another Twilight? Dun-dun-dun! Shine like...